In this video, I'll be resoldering an ESP32 MCU on a BTAX204 board using only basic tools, no hot air gun, just a soldering iron. Most soldering irons without a temperature dial typically run the tip at around 350 to 400 degrees Celsius, which is fine for this kind of job. This process applies to all BTAX boards with a single ASIC chip currently available. Um, I'll begin by powering on the bitax to confirm it works. Then I'll remove the ESP32, clean the pads and resolder it using only the soldering iron. After that I'll power it up again to see if it still runs. Follow along to see if I succeed or if I've just bricked a perfectly good bitax. Uh, I'm cutting a piece of a safety pin to make a small conductor. This will help transfer heat evenly across all the ESP32 pins. First I'll apply some flux, then I'll gently insert a cutter blade under the antenna section, that's the black part, near the edge of the ESP32. I need to be very careful here. The goal is just to slightly lift the ESP32 while applying heat to the pins. Pressing too hard on the blade could damage the antenna, the ESP32, or even the bit axe board. After I've lifted the ESP32 just a little bit, I use some wick wire to remove all the solder from the pins, or at least most of it.
Now I'm working on the sides and the upper edge of the ESP32. As you'll see, I end up brushing this part and I'll pay for it later. I don't focus too much on the side pins. By doing it this way, we free up both the bottom and upper sides, which allows us to pivot the ESP32 upward. Now that uh, I've lifted the ESP32 and we've got uh, both the top and bottom sides uh, free from the PCB, but the side pins are still connected. At this point I should have used more heat, but I didn't, and you'll see the result of that mistake very soon. Now that we've freed the ESP32 from the board, you can see some small brown pieces left on the PCB. Those are actually the bottom pads of the ESP32 itself, not the PCB. Because I forced the pins a bit too much, they just tore off from the underside of the ESP32. Luckily this uh, isn't a disaster. The ESP32 is designed to be connected through its side pins as well as the bottom pads, so we can still make a solid connection using the side pins only. If those had been PCB traces though, we'd have a big problem. That would mean um, having to repair or rebuild each copper trace by hand, and believe me, that's no easy job. I actually replaced the screen traces by hand in one of my previous videos. If you're interested, go check that out. Now we clean everything up, add some flux and start resoldering. First, I solder one pin on the ESP32 to hold it in place. Then I go through and connect the rest of the pins one by one. Be careful of solder bridges if you spot one. Just use some wick to remove the excess solder. If, if you remove too much, no problem. Just um, reapply a bit of solder and reconnect the pin. Keep going like that until all the pins are properly connected.
Now that everything's connected, we clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol, double check all the pins, and then comes the moment of truth. We connect the power, and voila, the Bitex starts up with no problem. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below.